Okay, today is May 4th, 2016, and right now in the foothills of Los Angeles at 8.45 a.m., we have a temperature of 60 degrees. The relative humidity is now 77%. The dew point is 53 degrees, and we have a barometric pressure of, of uh, 1,014 millibar, or 29.94 inches, which is the same as uh, last night. Okay, so right now we're watching the East Pacific water vapor loop, and we can see some uh, interesting features on these uh, large thunderstorms. We've got one here and one over here right over El Salvador, right there. Now this one right here is being blown apart. We can see a huge ring, blast ring. This is a severe, uh, very large, it's almost the size of the entire country of El Salvador. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna take a look at that. Uh, let's go to the uh, infrared map. We can see a huge ring as the result of a microwave uh, blast. They target this uh, thunderstorm system. Let's stop this thing and get it positioned. Okay, there's the first frame. We can see that that is a very large system. It's uh, way over here on the red scale. That's the uh, most intense. Uh, and uh, watch what happens here. We're just going to scroll through. They hit it somewhere between this frame, well, actually, right between these two frames, we can see the uh, last pattern develop right here. So we'll just scroll through this very slowly, and we can see the first shock wave right there, and also down here. And that is a result of the superheated air, water vapor, being superheated and expanding rapidly. We know that uh, hot water. The uh, gases expand very rapidly, particularly when they're superheated uh, instantaneously, like, like what we're seeing here, uh, using either, this could be uh, being done, being accomplished with a microwave, coherent microwave, or possibly a uh, laser, a, a, a infrared laser, something like that. We just don't know for sure, but uh, we do know that uh, this is being blown apart. That's the main thing. And we can see the shock waves. And the storm disappears. We have this shock wave. And, uh, and then we see uh, this will rebuild at some point later on in the day. And they'll, they will uh, repeat the process. But uh, that is a huge system right there. Let's just roll through it again. <clears throat> and we can see that that entire system disappears. Now, same thing is happening over here. See a blast pattern right all through here. That one storm right up in this area is being blown apart. You can see the blast pattern. Okay, we'll just roll this and you can see progression. This one here is a great example. Now, uh, let's go to the uh, visible light mode, which is right here. I'm going to stop this and we'll uh, queue it up from the beginning right here. So, there's that storm right over El Salvador. <clears throat> now, what we can see, uh, I don't know if this camera is picking it up, but there are fluorescent overlays right here and right here. And what, what that is doing is hiding. The initial hits by the the uh, laser or the microwave transmitter, and uh, they're doing that so that we cannot see the dimple marks. They look like little pock marks, and then we see a ring expand outward as these frames advance. Now look at the shock wave here. We have that ring right there, and that frame extends all the way around. Now, as we advance into the daylight hours, we can see some of the indents here, here, and right here. It's a big crater. It's like uh, when you drop a, a rock or a pebble into a pool, you see a big dimple and then you have a ring that expands outward. Well, this is the same, this is the exact same thing we're watching. They superheat these cores and that destroys the uh, the organization of the thunderstorm. 
and they just dissipate within the seven and one half hour loop typically, which is what we're seeing here. This is a seven and one half hour loop. Let's watch this one over here. See that ring right here and here? That is a shock wave, water vapor, a shock wave extending out. But, uh, this is a great example. All this is, is a really great example today of what these people do uh, on a daily basis. Now that we're moving into the uh, hurricane season, we're in May now, and by the end of, the, of this month, we should start to be seeing uh, uh, a lot of thunderstorm activity out in these waters. These are very warm uh, ocean waters, and I don't have my chart up right now, but we'll take a look at that on the next video, the actual uh, temperature uh, model for, for the uh, East Pacific. So this is what they're going to have to do. This is what they've been doing uh, to uh, manage all the hurricanes that have been uh, popping up in the uh, East Pacific. And notice all these little these these indents. This is where they they're hitting these uh, storms. So we'll just uh, run that. This is a great example over here. That is just about as good as it gets. <clears throat> All right, so let's go back to the uh, the water vapor mode. You can see the blast pattern. Same thing over here. That is a, that is a great example right there. That is a blast wave, a shock wave from that rapidly expanding uh, water vapor. They hit that with a right dead center with a uh, Probably microwave and that instantaneously heats all that water vapor, and then we get this huge blast ring, this shock wave, and you see the blast patterns. Okay, let's um, take a look now at uh, another set of thunderstorms. This is a little bit further north, right off of Mexico. Uh, same thing's happening here. This is early in the loop. Uh, later on, in about three or four hours, we'll see these uh, being blown apart. We can see a shock wave right there down here as well let's uh move to the next uh this is the uh the infrared loop the rainbow loop and we can see that uh, this one right here is being targeted now if we advance to the uh the visible light mode we can see the uh the overlay they're photoshopping several of these frames to hide the dimples but as we uh, transition from the night to day, right here, we have the, the sunlight is uh, being is is able to uh, capture. That is the the oblique angle. The sun is is actually shining in from a very uh, shallow angle, and so we can see the the contour along the tops of these uh, thunderheads. And what we see here is a ring, and what looks like a uh, a little dimple that is expanded into a sort of a crater and so we can see the contour of the tops of these clouds is what I'm trying to say and uh, so we're able to determine uh, what's going on here and now they started photoshopping these here about six months ago they didn't used to uh, put overlays over these but they do that now to uh, hide their work but we can still see the rings and the blast patterns, that's easy to see. Okay. All right, so that's what's happening there. Let's go take a look at what's happening in our area off of California. Here's the uh, water vapor loop for the West Pacific, or the Western US. This uh, gale force system is continuing to uh, inch its way towards California. And we can see that uh, transmitter is still applying heat to the core. The core looks somewhat disorganized. Uh, there is some development here. We can see that right in the very center of that. They've got heat right dead center on that core. And uh, now when we look at this in the um, the infrared loop, we can see that the jet stream is still being affected by all that heat. And what's going to happen, here's LA right there. We're not going to get anything. We have a marine layer right now. It's uh, the, uh, as I say, the uh, 
the uh, relative humidity is up at 77 percent that's not uh, going to get us any rain particularly when they're spraying the chemtrails let's take a look at the uh this is the SSEC uh, water vapor map. And uh, it's kind of hard to see the chemtrail activity here. Uh, I don't see, well, actually, right in here, we can see a couple of trails being laid out. And also, right in here, that's, uh, that's what's happening today. Uh, very slim chance of rain. And, okay, so that's the summary. Uh, we will uh, do another update tomorrow.